Today we have a very special guitar to show you. This is a 1940 original vintage Martin 018. And we're going to look at this guitar. We're also going to tell you what you should be looking for when shopping for a vintage instrument. Stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you want to support the channel, visit our spring store, link below for custom t-shirts, and check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. So this is a really cool guitar. 1940, yeah. Martin 018 Burst, which makes it even rarer. Um, I gotta tell the story behind this guitar. Go for okay. it. So the year's 1940. Chris was working as a shoe shine down right by a, <laughs> an old guitar shop, and he saved up for ye months and months and months. Put my nickels together. Yeah, yeah. and this is what what came out of it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great little guitar. So this walked into our store, um, and uh, quite a character. You had this guitar, and this is this is really a very very cool instrument. It has some issues though. And so we're going to demo it for you today. We're going to talk a little bit about it, but I, I find it to be a great example of, in truth, what's really going on in the vintage guitar world versus what you usually see when it's presented in a video or on a website or something somewhere. Uh, because most of the time, these things, I mean, it's, it's an old guitar to say the least. It, you know, in what, 18 years, it'll be 100 years old. Yep. Pretty crazy. Yep. Um, and so it, it's got some warts. It has some things that it needs, which is typical. It also has some, <laughs> like some peculiarities that I want to point out. Uh, but it's a fantastic guitar. Um, and, you, you know, we were talking about bursts, how unusual it yeah. is, particularly to see an original burst like this. Um, Vince Gill collects quite a few bursts. Yeah, there's there's a certain subset of collectors that are like, I need to find the bursts. There's the different types. They they got the amber tone kind of mm -hmm. thing. I think in the custom shop they call it the 1933 burst. That's you know there's different types of bursts. They were made in much smaller quantities right. than just the natural top guitars. Um, and you know it's crazy because oftentimes you'll see one like pop up on reverb and they're in much worse condition. Like this is a guitar with some things going on, yeah. but no, it's this in surprisingly good. great condition. Yeah, so Burst, uh, you know, a, a Martin of this age and vintage being available is unusual to find more and more, particularly for decent, you know, fairly affordable money for this kind of an instrument. A Burst is even more rare. They started those in the, in the 1930s, and it was, you know, there's so many that were done per year compared to the rest of the natural finish instruments. So you should know that going in. But to Cooper's point, a lot of times we find instruments like these, um, even at shows with really, really high dollar values and the tops are cracked. You know, the backs are cracked, the sides are cracked. They've, they've lived uh, a difficult life and they show all the scars from it. I'm actually going to say that this has some interesting life behind it uh, because of some things inside that tend to indicate where this guitar may have been kept. So uh, let's, let's talk about some of the peculiarities on the guitar and we'll talk about what it needs. Cooper, what's inside the guitar? You got some cobwebs in there. You got a little mud dauber action, which like, you know. <laughs> That's the best. Yeah. So <laughs> sometimes you grab an old guitar that someone's had and it's got like a rattlesnake rattle in there. Yeah. And, you know, that's cool. It's mojo, whatever. Um, this is surprisingly not the first vintage Martin that I have looked in the sound hole and seen a mud dauber nest attached to one of the braces. I mean, it was someone's home. It was a factory option. <laughs> yeah, factory option. You get that custom shop, huge upgrade these days. It's an important point though, Cooper. This was this is someone's instrument and somebody's home. Um, somebody's like, yeah, there's a little bit of buzz in it, this thing. You know it, what I'm saying? It is vacant, right? Yeah, I think. So what that implies though is that this is probably hung somewhere where it was accessible to, to wild a, beasts. <laughs> to a wasp. Yeah. So it could have been hanging in the garage, which makes the fact that it's in this good uh, nick uh, yeah, even more impressive. But from everything we can tell, it's, it's otherwise all original. Um, but it needs some things. Yeah. So namely, it's got a crack in the bridge and it needs a neck reset. 
And so uh, we've got old strings on. We haven't even re restrung this yet. Yeah. Um, but it's available. <laughs> and it's going to uh, get some work done on it. So a neck reset and some bridge work is pretty common on yeah. a guitar of this vintage. And that's the thing that you should know when you're shopping for an instrument. So some of the best uh, vintage shops for acoustic guitars, namely like uh, Carter's and Groon's, will often list guitars one of two ways. So they will list a vintage guitar before the repairs have been made. So, and they're very transparent about it, just kind of like how we are being with this guitar. Um, I don't know that they always advertise that it has cobwebs or mud toppers inside, but I guarantee you they've seen the same thing. Yeah. Um, Black Widows, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, they will list the guitar in its condition, specify what's going on with the finish, and say it needs a new bridge, it needs a neck reset, it needs this, that, or the other. None of those things have been done. Here's the price. Okay? It's all original. There's your price. The other way they'll do it is it goes through their shop. They have very talented craftsmen. Uh, and, and luthiers, repair technicians, that they will do the fixing, and then they'll say, here is an original such and such guitar. All of these things have been done to it. Here's the price. And thankfully, at Alamo Music, we have a guitar repair guru yep. named Casey Jones. Driving just, that train. Just a classic name, too, yeah. right? Just aptly named. But he's, he's, a, he's a master, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, there are some services that we will be offering that we have not been able to. This doesn't necessarily need a refret, like the frets mm -hmm. aren't terrible, but th it's cool to have somebody in the shop that we can do refrets, neck resets, Finish all that kind of stuff. stuff. Um, so, so yeah, there's, I mean, the saddle on here, it's pretty rock and roll. There, you know? is, there is no saddle. So again, things that you'll see. So here, here are the things that you'll see if you come across I don't know, maybe you're lucky enough and you go to an estate sale and they've got a 1940 Martins in there for 250 bucks. It will probably have cracks somewhere. Generally, the bridge is gonna be cracked. Sometimes the, uh, the bridge plate is kind of worn out and they'll kind of tear through the top if you're not careful. Yeah. So work in there is not unusual. Putting a new bridge on is not unusual. Cracks in the fretboard are not unusual. Um, fallen braces are not unusual. Finish work, eh, I mean, really, just leave it as is at this point. Uh, on a nitro finish, this this guitar, this actually the finish is pretty nice. Yeah. But if you look at it very closely, it's got that patina. It's really sunken into the wood grain. There's some checking on it, which you would expect to see. That's like That's this tiny awesome. little cracks, you know. That's very cool. And and we we like it. Um, you know, the fact that it has no saddle is because it needs a neck reset. So what happens over time is that the guitar under pressure tends to fold in on itself. This 14th fret kind of acts as a hinge with the top sinking and the neck kind of bending up. And then if you have a, a tall saddle, which you should have, the action's just way too high. And so over time, rather than repair the neck, people would kind of sa sand their saddle down more and more and more and more uh, until you get yeah. what you got. And basically like nothing down there anymore. That being said, Chris and I have both been to guitar shows well, where we will see pre-war Martins and they will have been completely retopped or like totally Frankensteined up with yeah. different things that go for probably, I mean, three times the price of what the seller of this guitar is asking for it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that have this blown up idea that if it says pre-war Martin, it's gotta be $50,000. You can find some really cool stuff from the era that needs minimal work like this. And like I played it in the demo, it's not, I did leave it tuned down to C sharp. Yeah, but it, it wouldn't be playable at standard pitch right now because of the work it needs. But, okay, so this guitar is super light. Like I, I picked up the case and I opened the case to make sure the guitar was still in there because it's so light. And that's one, to do with pre-war construction, because we shot another video with a guitar that both of us have absolutely fallen in love with, which is a 1937 D18 Authentic. So it's a new guitar following those building practices, and it's incredibly light. Yeah. So the build style equates to the lightness of this guitar, but also, over time, guitars get better with age. The reason is the wood continues to change. It continues to kind of dry out. Volatiles in the wood evaporate. Uh, cells in the wood close and you end up with something that's lighter and stiffer at the same time. Um, 
with you know cobwebs for additional resonance. But <laughs> it's it ends up being a really really uh, cool uh, sounding instrument because it's so resonant and easy to play. The other thing about guitars like this is is everyone wants a D28, everyone wants a D18, everyone wants a triple O28 or an OM42 or whatever, right? So guitars like an O18, which are gems, get overlooked. And yeah. so sometimes you can get a vintage one of these at a fraction of the cost that someone charge a similarly uh, similar year and probably condition yeah. D28. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm going to play it for you. If it sounds like a 78 RPM record from 1940, it's because it's tuned down to C sharp. Um, which is what we received it in. I just pretty much tuned it relative to where it was harmonizing. Yeah. And um, the strings are probably about 10 to 15 years old, if you know, if not older. And it comes out sounding pretty cool. I think like does sound cool. there's a, this book by Jeff Tweedy when he's talking about his preferences and guitars and sound and everything. And he likes it when the strings are like six months old and they're dead and they can finally sound like how he wants it sound like this is like Jeff Tweedy's dream sound, I think. Yeah, so Which, either Jeff or Vince Gill should buy this guitar. Yeah, I mean, we got it. I'm a fan of both of you, so please give us a call. It'll cost more, though. All right, so let's take a listen to it. Check it out. All right, so there you have it. It sounds very cool. I mean, just as is, this is a cool instrument. It's got a lot of mojo. I think that Mud Dauber Ness is doing something for the sound. Um, so, you know, maybe it could be a little secret we adopt. It's a new feature in guitars going forward. Yeah. Let the bugs live in it for a bit. Uh, but no, I in all honesty, it's just a really, really precious instrument. Um, I'm glad that we have it here. And, uh, you know, it's going to be available and, you know, uh, all of those things that we talked about, which are indicative of, of vintage instruments, um, can be taken care of. So, yeah. but I wanted to show everybody this uh, without the luster of what goes on behind the scenes. This is the the real deal, the authentic stuff. That this is what you typically tend to find uh, before a dealer gets their hands on it and kind of gussies it up. This is the raw, unvarnished truth yeah. of an 80-year-old guitar. Yeah, and if you're into this kind of thing, luckily. We've received a few interesting consignments recently 
we really like playing this stuff, whether it be electric, acoustic, whatever. We got a crazy, probably 50 year old accordion in the store that, you know, we do have an accordion channel and we do a ton with accordions, yeah. so check that out. But um, if you're into LG1s, we got some very cool. And if you are someone, just a wild hypothetical, if you're somebody that has some old school guitars, you want some work done to them, we can do that. If you want to look at maybe selling them and getting something different, we, can help we would love to check out your guitars, show them to the rest of the viewers. Because um, I love playing vintage stuff. We don't get it too often because I don't think that's really what we're known for, but we appreciate it very much. This is the kind of thing that kind of brightens our whole week, even though it's got scary bugs in it. No, I love it because it's vintage done right. Like yeah. you said, it's not... You know, we're not trying to say it's something it's not. We're not saying this is a $100,000 guitar or something stupid. Um, but it is a fantastic instrument. And, um, you know, when you when you jump into the vintage market, like I've talked about, everyone always thinks like, oh, just because this, this Stratocaster is a 62, it's the best guitar in the world. Not necessarily. You know, there's a lot of times a newer guitar may actually, in every quantifiable measure, be a better guitar. Yeah. But you can also find these vintage guitars, particularly in acoustics, where they've opened up. Um, and they are just amazing sounding instruments. And with a little love, a little TLC, yeah. uh, they can continue to live kind of a secondary life and be special in someone's, someone's life. You know, this is, what I, this is what I love about guitars. This is 80 years old. It's an heirloom instrument. Someone bought this new for, you know, a pittance of what it, we would you know, pay for a guitar like this nowadays, even if it was a brand new 018. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's lived, it's stood the test of times, and it, it still has a life to it, and someone can continue to make music on it. And, you know, maybe I get romantic about it, but I think that's what's awesome about guitars, so. Yeah, and the other thing is, oftentimes we're showing you guitars that they can cover a lot of bases. You know, we do a ton with the most versatile acoustic guitar, most versatile electric guitar. And it's kind of this goal of, if you, if you have one guitar, you can play all these tones with it. This is the kind of thing that, to me, it's like, you get something like this, and then it inspires you to make music for this guitar. It has sound. It has songs. Yeah, it. it's got yeah. its own vibe. So I think about you could buy a D18 and record a whole album with it, but this is like you would want to isolate this and make it its own kind of focus, which uh, it's a whole different way of looking at guitars, I think. But this is the kind of inspiration machine that a lot of people could get a ton out of. So. Yep. So if you're looking for a new guitar, you want to go to our website, which is? It's alamomusic.com. Pregnant pause. Right? Yeah. Um, now, I will say, as you sh watch this video, you may go to our website and not find this guitar on there uh, because it's going to be in our service department um, and getting checked out and all of that stuff. But if you are interested in this guitar, whether it's online when you watch this video or not, give us a call. Um, so that we can kind of give you an update, touch base with you, talk about what's going on. Vintage instruments are not something that I would ever advise that you just kind of add to cart. Every vintage person selling something on a reverb right now is yelling at me, but seriously, uh, that's something you should talk to somebody about if you're interested in, in the guitar. And uh, thankfully we have educated people here that can help you. So you can chat with those people on our website or you can give us a call, come and send us an email, what have you. But hopefully this is giving you a, a nice kind of unvarnished, realistic look of what's available in guitars that are you know, 80, 100 years old, that kind of thing. It's very cool. It's a cool world to, uh, to play in. Um, it's got its own you know, minefield about it, but uh, I love them. They're, they're great instruments. Yeah. I would also say if you are someone who may have like a guitar that was handed down from a relative or you've just got something that's been sitting in the case and you want to know if it's worth anything, if you want to know that it has to have work done to it, whatever it may be, you can send us photos. You can talk with our service department because they're super into that kind yep. of thing. We had a guy come in not too long ago with a like a early 80s Japanese Strat that he had found in a closet at a church on a mission trip and had bought the guitar from them. He was like, this is just cool. It was falling apart. Yeah. He brought it in the service department and they kind of rebuilt it from scratch, but like all new pickups, but really took a lot of care with it. It's a super cool guitar now that, you know, we'll go to a guy that bought it and just thought it might be cool and now he's got some kind of special. So it's it'll be cool to kind of get more of that, talk to people about their guitars, make improvements, make them playable. All the stories. Bring be them back to life. Yep. 
Because we always say at the end of the day, the best guitar in the world is the one that you're playing, whether it's its first lease on life or its 40th lease on life. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos, and keep coming back for more. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.